Hi, how's it going everyone? My name is Hank and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to be uh, talking about the uh, Evergrande debt crisis that uh, you may have seen in the news over the uh, past couple of days and why it could uh, be important to you and how it may uh, potentially trigger a, a global recession. So first off, what exactly is Evergrande and what exactly do they do? So Evergrande is one of the biggest real estate developers in China, and they own more than 1,300 projects across more than 280 cities in China. Over the past few years, not only do they do our property development, they also diversified into wealth management and even making electrical cars. The rise of Evergrande has coincided with the massive move of people from the rural areas of China into the more densely populated cities in China, which served to massively drive up the housing prices. So if we look at this particular chart from Bloomberg, in this chart of China's average new home price, the 50 city average back in 2010 is indicated by the black line, while the uh, tier one city, which are the biggest cities in China is indicated by the uh, blue line. So over the past 10 years or so, there has been a steady increase of the uh, average 50 city uh, cost for new home, but the tier one city cost has completely skyrocketed. For people that are not aware, the housing market in China is completely crazy because there aren't that many uh, investment chances or opportunities for people to invest. So pretty much everyone piles on all their investment into real estate. The home price to income ratio for some of the major cities in China, such as Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, the uh, medium apartment price is more than 30 times the medium family disposable income per year. Now, if you think the New Zealand housing market is bad, the uh, property prices index by country for the year 2021, they listed China as the ninth highest ranked country in terms of price to income ratio at 27.89. So they're like the ninth most expensive country uh, when compared to your actual income. New Zealand is way down in 94th place at 7.78. While housing prices are definitely expensive in New Zealand, New Zealand definitely earns a decent amount in terms of salary. Not the highest, but definitely not the lowest. Now in China, a lot of times houses are expensive and people don't get paid that much on average. This creates a bubble situation where people they almost expect the housing prices to keep on going up so that people dump their entire life saving into property. Because of the belief that the housing price will keep on increasing in China, Evergrande have been expanding aggressively by uh, borrowing more than $300 billion to cover the costs uh, for developer and uh, new property uh, development. Right now, they are struggling to repay the interest payments for the debt of the money that they have borrowed out. So how exactly is this a bad news? So China is the world's second largest economy and the property sector makes up roughly a quarter, which is around 25 to 27% of their GDP. Some people believe that a Chinese property crash could cause a recession in the Chinese economy, which has a flow on effect on other countries that do business with China, which is pretty much the majority of countries in the world. Despite the fall in the market after uh, Evergrande concerns causing the uh, market to have its worst day in a couple of months, just a couple of days ago, there is no reason to believe that a recession is actually coming. It's a really tough situation for people that have invested money to buy a new apartment in China, especially since a lot of times you have to pre-commit the money before the uh, development building is actually uh, being built. That there is a high probability that they probably won't even get their money back. But the reality is that this is not something that came completely out of the blue. People have known for ages that Evergrande has been expanding too fast and possibly taking on too much debt. If we look at the share price chart for Evergrande, they have reached a $28 high just as recently as uh, July last year. And now their share price is at around $2.50. So that is a drop of around 90%, which means that people have 
not had uh, the biggest amount of confidence in the company over the past year already. So none of this has exactly all come out of the blue. Many people already knew that Evergrande had a debt crisis issue. On the other hand, when recessions do happen, they tend to happen when people are least expecting it to happen. It's almost like saying that if you can see a car coming towards you, you are more likely to be able to avoid the car. People have already seen that Evergrande is a company that has been taking on a ton of liabilities. Recessions tend to happen when there's a huge amount of optimism, when people believe that nothing could ever fail. For example, the tech bubble in the early 2000s, everyone thought that all the tech stocks are going to the moon and the tech will just completely change everything. And it's the same thing that's happened again in uh, the housing crisis in 2008. Everyone thought that the housing was a completely uh, safe investment and they just kept on buying uh, different houses. What I find really funny is that literally only a month ago, global investors were encouraged to uh, invest in China's rental property amid shifting uh, political winds. This happened directly after the change in policy in China designed to crack down on private tutoring and to rein in the big tech companies. Beijing is literally trying to encourage foreign capital to help invest in the rental housing and is attracting plenty of institutional interest. Isn't it interesting that they were saying merely a month ago that rental properties are a great investment, but now these property developers can't even pay their debts. The real thing that interests me is how the Chinese government will respond to all of this situation because we know that in the USA, the US government will end up bailing out a lot of these uh, big companies if they do get into this particular situation. And I am very interested in seeing how the Chinese government will handle this uh, particular situation of one of their biggest property developers. Will they end up bailing out the company or would they let the company fold and essentially go into default. And that's something that I will pay attention to over the next coming month because I do not think a recession will be coming out of this. Let me know what you think and I will see you next time.